Hi, everyone. Um, so first of all, let me just open this by saying that I am not an agile expert. Uh, these are just some techniques that I that I tend to use uh, often on, on my day to day. Um, and and we will explain a little bit what this is and, and how you can benefit from using this. So first of all, what is um, agile? So agile is a bit of a principle or a framework to to organize and structure projects it's a let's 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 call it a project manager or a pro project management uh, technique um, if if you're one of these people that tend to have a lot of post-its around with tasks to do and so on you're probably already even using some of the techniques that the the agile movement inspires um, but to perhaps keep it a bit more uh, focused on the point so uh, agile is something that started uh, in industry um, it was mostly driven by um, an intention to deliver a good product to, um, to the customers, but at the same time to deliver that product uh, as quickly as possible, uh, even if in a prototype state, um, but at the same time allowing to, um, again, as quick as possible, adapt and, and modify the product to better fit the needs of, of the client. And so as you can kind of uh, you can kind of see from, from just the, the Agile software uh, development manifest. And this was, as I said, was something that started in industry, but uh, specifically in the software world. And, and uh, the, the, the kind of like striking point and the reason why it's called Agile is, is in part because of this uh, want, I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor. Uh, Malvika, can you maybe give me a thumbs up? No? Okay. Then let's see if I can do... this can you see it now yeah okay, see it. awesome so so what i was pointing to is um responding to change this was one of the aspects that um kind of motivated to to give this name to to the movement or to the framework um and and agile in the sense of being very fast and and, and kind of um responsive to to requests and changes and so you might, uh, if you if you look a little bit into what this this framework uh, consists of, or if you compare it with other um, kind of approaches that people use in in the field, you you may encounter these these words uh, waterfall, um, and you might find also um, um, other names for for this kind of iterative uh, process. There's many many different ways that you can structure this, um, and and I'll I'll explain a few in a, in a second. But if you just look at the waterfall uh, kind of concept, you can you can see that it it falls from one stage to the next. the The key point here is that all of the project plan is kind of defined from the beginning, and you just follow along in a sequ in a sequential fashion. So you can imagine that if at any point during design or at any point during the implementation or one of the later stages, there's something that you need to change about the plan, this process is rather rigid and doesn't really allow this. And so the, the iterative process is a bit more generic or a bit more um, responsive. It typically starts by breaking a larger problem into smaller chunks so that they become more actionable. Um, exactly what small means, this is what differs a lot between different uh, paradigms, but it can be something that lasts a day. It can be something that lasts a few hours. Um, and then you... You do these kinds of sprints, or you you uh, aggregate these tasks into milestones, and and once each milestone is completed, then you reach uh, a stage where where you have like a first release or a, a prototype of of the thing that you're trying to accomplish. In in the case of your OLS project, it can be a milestone. For instance, uh, you have a website to build, um, and and you can think how to break the that big task into smaller chunks. And um, it could be the, the first article that you write could be the, an example of, of a, a first deliverable. And so to, to sum it up, it's a technique uh, primarily for software development, but we can use it elsewhere and we can go a little bit more into detail of how to actually do that. Um, uh, it's, it's great um, for project management. It helps you visualize the work that you still have to do um, and also to invite others to, to, to join the project as well, because everything is very visible in terms of what needs to be done and, and what has been done. 
And, and then there's lots, oops, so that's, there's lots of variations in terms of how this is structured um, and, and also in terms of advantages over the, the, the traditional waterfall method. So, so I mentioned breaking down things into tasks and, and milestones and so on. Um, and, and I mentioned as well that you could aim for slices of uh, one to two hours, uh, ideally not more than a day or two. The, the reason for this fragmentation is because you want to have a good, a good sense of, of progress. It's very often the case that you estimate a task to be one or two hours, and then it turns out that you spend an entire afternoon or something because we get distracted, because there's other things that we didn't really think. And the idea here is that the agile movement will help you structure those things that are outside of the tasks that you're doing, and they just become tasks again that will get picked up later and move to a milestone that you will uh, complete at a later stage. And so to give a, a more concrete example or a real life example, um, if, if you have already explored a little bit of GitHub and if you've perhaps browsed some of the existing projects there, you might see projects like Intermine uh, where in this, uh, in this diagram, each of these gray boxes is, um, sorry for the background noise, each of these, back, uh, each of these gray boxes is um, a version release and the tasks themselves are uh, within uh, each of, of these gray boxes. And in this case, milestones, there are several of them. You can see already some estimate of when these would be achieved and, um, and, and also a very colorful interface for, for how, the, how to label things and how to structure, not just in terms of milestones, but also in terms of what these tasks are, are all about. Um, in, a, in a slightly different way or a more um, kind of, uh, so one of the, con one of the paradigms in, in Agile or a more popular one, if you have used um, uh, the Kanban style board where instead of having the versions like or the milestones as we mentioned before, you have just the notion of what, what is to be done, what is in progress and, and what is already completed. So this is like a, a simplified version is not so focused on on the software or versions or, or a specific um, milestones or, or goals, but it's more to capture what is actually being active um, worked on. And, and you could do this process within a milestone. So all of the tasks that you now see in the screen could be within one milestone alone. Uh, this, also, this also to say that for GitHub, um, there's uh, some simplifications and, and some automation that you can do. Um, you, we, can, we can talk about that uh, later if you're interested. And so just to, to wrap up uh, some examples, you could have a task that is just to acquire, like in the website uh, context that I mentioned before, uh, one, one big task could be to acquire a domain for that website. And then you can see an example of how to break that task down into smaller tasks. Or if you have a specific section of the website that you want to create, and, and then you can see that for that, there's perhaps more tasks that need to be completed. And so ideally you would break it down again into, into subsequently smaller steps. Um, I will skip this for, for the sake of time. And um, I, I didn't go so much into the jargon that is involved. I mentioned that there's different sub frameworks, Scrum, Kanban and Extreme Programming are some examples of, of these. They, they all follow the, the Agile principles. What changes between them is sometimes how big these tasks are, how big the milestones are, how often you, you kind of do the, the larger loop or the smaller loop for how long you do uh, these things called sprints, which is kind of a way of getting the entire group working collectively in, in a set of tasks. Um, and then just how you structure. But so without going too much into detail on that, it's just different ways of, of handling the workload and, and prioritizing the tasks that you have to do. And, and then to, to finalize, even though as I, I try to be very superficial here as well to kind of give a high level um, introduction to this, to this topic, um, if, you're, if you're doing software development, you will find that uh, all of this probably translates a lot more versions, milestones, and so on. This kind of makes sense. Um, but uh, I, I, I use this personally for, for my own day-to-day -day just to manage tasks that I have to do, things like uh, reporting or planning meetings or anything, anything of this sort. 
um, and and I find that it works rather well. 